If you want to hear my answers to the perfect makeup tag, then stick around. Hi there, it's Elen and welcome back, or if it's your first time, welcome to HMM Makeup or Hmm Makeup. I am doing a tag today and the tag is from Morgan Turner and Patty Alonzo. Just checking the names, yes, I've got them right. <laughs> and I have not done a tag video in a long time, so thank you so much to Morgan and Patty for teaming up to uh, introduce this tag video concept, and I am happy to, uh, to take it on. And part of why I decided to take it on is because it's fun, it's only 10 questions, and it really is asking the folks who are participating for the best of the best. I will say that for the 10 questions, because there are only 10, I may show more than one brand and or more than one product because it's a really short tag and I think we can have some fun. So let's uh, dive right in, shall we? Okay, the first question is, which primer creates the perfect base and I have a couple of answers for that. I like two very different kinds of uh, primers. I do like this Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer from First Aid Beauty. Let me just bring it closer to the camera so you can see. So I, I do like this one and what I like about it is that it is a moisturizing primer and sometimes my skin is dry and this is the kind of base that I want. So, um, and I have, I mean, I like this enough that I have another one um, waiting for when this one is, is done. So I, I it's a product that I, it's a go-to for me and obviously a repurchase, a, a number of times repurchased. So it's a product that I really care about. I should say care about having in my collection. Now this is another uh, category of primer and it's the putty primer and elf calls it the poreless uh, putty primer and it looks like this hopefully you can see and um i have also in this case it's a, a sample size but i you can still see it the silk canvas by tatcha and it looks like this and to me, they work very much uh, the same. I, I like them both. I like this little container because I can have it in my overnight bag and have a really good primer uh, for on the go. And they're, they're just very different. If I'm doing a glam evening, I'm more likely to use one of these. If I'm doing a have to have hydration and my foundation is going to be on the whole day, I'm more likely to go for a moisturizing primer because usually what I have is if I'm doing a glam look, it's later in the day and my skin has been moisturized at, from my morning skincare and I don't need to have a moisturizing primer. I hope that makes sense because I have a oily T-zone so I, my, my skin kind of hydrates itself throughout the day and, and I find that I can get away with just uh, these. So that is my perfect base. Next question is, what goes on top of that base? And it is, which foundation has the perfect finish? I tend to like the Makeup Forever HD foundation. And I'm not going to say which one because I really think it, it you have to pick the one that goes with your, your skin. Uh, for me, the HD foundation that was been has been available since I think uh, probably even earlier than 2018-19. It's and I, and I I ran out of it. Obviously, I finished it. If I can find a picture, I'll put it on the screen. And I I was having I had it in. I think it was Y. Two twenty five or two thirty five. And it was great. It was, it was beautiful. And I really, really enjoyed it. I also enjoy the Double Wear by Estee Lauder. And I enjoy the Fit Me foundation and concealer from 
uh, Maybelline. It's the whole gamut. So I have some expensive and I have some not so expensive foundation and I think it works quite well. And I also have some stick foundation from Sephora that I think works quite well. But if I'm saying what would be my go-to, I would say the Fit Me and the Makeup Forever HD foundation. And that's, it's a, it's a liquid foundation. And I, every time I use it, I really enjoy it. The reason I don't have it right now in my collection is because I have a series of other foundations that I wanted to try. And if you have six to eight foundations, there's no reason to go and, and repurchase one that, that you've had. Just use what you've got, right? I mean, I'm trying a bunch of foundations. I will finish them over the next couple of years and then maybe go back to some favorites. That was a long answer. Let's go to the next one. Oh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't really answer in that I have a little bit more to say because when I say the Fit Me, I'm talking about the Fit Me concealer, the Fit Me um, liquid foundation, but also the Fit Me powder. And so that powder can sometimes add coverage if I'm using um, the liquid foundation and concealer. And this is very much the same. This is the dual finish by um, Lancome and I use it in the in 220 buff 2 and it's neat because you can use it wet or dry and it adds a nice layer of coverage to whichever foundation is underneath or I use it on its own and the dual finish by Lancome I consider a, a one and done foundation if I'm on the go it just seems to, to suit my skin if you don't need a whole lot of coverage you, you want coverage but you don't absolutely need a liquid foundation the double wear not double wear pardon me dual finish double wear is a different brand uh, I do really like the Lancome product and tend to repurchase it I think this is my third one I like it I like it Okay, we are now into concealer. The question is, which concealer has the perfect coverage? And I'm going to cheat because it depends where. Um, I really enjoy these pencils from Smashbox. I tried to see if on Sephora Canada they still had these and they didn't, but I didn't check smashbox.ca. I really, really like this pencil. What I do is I just put this concealer color right here and I'm wearing it today so I put it right here just just about you know the size of the the um, top half of my my pinky finger just just about this much uh, right here and right here and I and I just tap it out into the rest of my foundation under my eye and it just blends perfectly I think you would agree that I don't really look like I've got concealer on and it, it's it's lovely and it's going to last me forever I mean this thing I've been using it for months and it's I barely look like I have a dent in it let me show you a different um, this is the contour pencil that I'm not really using and and it's it barely shows that I've used this and I've, I've sharpened it multiple times and it, it doesn't even show and these pencils come as a trio I don't know if you can tell, but it, it has, this is obviously the concealer right here, and then more of a contour color and more of a bronzer color. And I just, I really like the formula of these uh, pencils. Next up, uh, I have this uh, Benefit Boing Industrial Strength Concealer. This one I tend to use more so around my nose because it somehow survives me needing to, to blow my nose. <laughs> and hey, we all know what it's like to have concealer come right off the face anytime we blow our nose. And at least I think it's a well-known challenge. And this one seems to have a chance to actually stay put, which I really appreciate. So there's that one. I might use um, this one, though I haven't tried it. But based on what I like about the um, other one, the cream one on the under eye, this one might do the trick as well, but but so far, because I have it in my collection, uh, the Boing uh, Industrial Concealer right around here 
is, I find it's perfect. And finally, I really like this concealer as well. It's the Fit Me in uh, number 25, if you're curious. I have purchased multiples of these. And what I like is that this concealer also works really well as foundation. So if I want a bag for a week and I don't want to have to lug a whole bunch of stuff, I can actually use this Fit Me concealer as my concealer and foundation for a trip. Um, I will probably bring a brightener, like I showed you the pencil from the Smashbox um, trio, but this is pretty darn good. And I have it on my face right now as my foundation and concealer. It works really well. It, it really does. Uh, and, and this is full day's worth of wear makeup. This is the evening. I put this on this morning and I think it it's worn really well. Um, I'm a fan of Maybelline, the, the Maybelline Fit Me line. I think that the, the powder, the concealer, uh, the foundation, they're all good. And it's a very solid drugstore brand for sure. For a powder that gives the perfect blur, I'm going to say, I'm going to offer a few powders. The Fit Me powder from Maybelline is very, very good. So along with everything I've said about the Fit Me line from Maybelline, I would strongly suggest that powder. I don't have it right now to show you, but I have finished more than one, loose or uh, pressed. It's, it's good stuff. It, it's a, just a very good powder. I don't have an issue with it. One that I want to mention as well that I would definitely reach for for an evening out, a, a special occasion, is the Hourglass Veil. Um, specifically, it's called, yeah, it's just Veil. It's, it's a beautiful powder. I had a mini. I love the effect on my skin, and so I ended up getting the full size, and I do not regret it one bit. And I'm just going to give another shout out to the Lancome Dual Finish because this is a great compact to bring with if I need to touch up my foundation for the, uh, the evening. It does act perfectly well as a powder, and I've, like I've said, it's a repurchase, and I quite enjoy using it because it does what it needs to do. And you may not believe this, but I am going to show you a powder that is from e.l.f. And it is a powder that you just kind of swirl your brush in and you finish uh, your look once everything else is uh, done on your face. So you can, you can use it to, for a little bit of uh, color correction and just kind of smoothing everything out. Um, and it does very much the same kind of effect as the uh, Meteorite Pearls from uh, Guerlain. And even um, Elf had the pearls, uh, the, the same colors uh, in pearl format as well uh, in their line. So I, I really quite like this powder as well to, to finish my look. Now number five is which bronzer has the perfect undertone? Well, in my head, it my only answer can be, it depends. It depends on what it is that I'm looking for. So I have four to show you. And the first one may very well surprise you. And it is an e.l.f. product. And it's a duo that has a bronzer and a blush. And it is perfect for this uh, My Face But Better. There's just a nice little peachy side and then a bronzer side. And for my skin tone, it's very flattering. It, it does a little bit of enhancing and contouring so I can enhance my cheek with the peach. I can um, chisel myself a little bit with the, the bronzer. And it's just easy and it's ridiculously inexpensive. Elf products are ridiculously inexpensive and you can tell that I've been in this thing. And I have high-end stuff. And so when I go and I reach for something that's a couple of bucks, more and more, it says something. 
I, I really do think e.l.f. has some pretty darn good products. Another bronzer I want to show you is one that is a definite favorite. It's the Butter Bronzer. I've had three of these so far. This one did take a tumble, so it's not as pretty as it used to be, but you can see I got my hit pan, and I actually hit pan before it got messed up, but it's it still it smells great. It applies beautifully. I do like the fact that it's more on the uh, cool side. It's not a specific, a, a very uh, warm bronzer, but every time I wear it, I think that it it looks great, and I would, I, I highly recommend it, suggest it all the time, and so it absolutely had to make this video. And now, I showed you two go-to bronzers right now, and I want to show you two more that I more so use in the summertime, and they have a shimmering effect uh, on the skin and uh, one of them is the ambient luminous bronze light from hourglass and it looks like this and it did have it did have a tumble in my overnight bag but um, it is very very pretty it's it has a nice glow to it don't know if you can see it on my hand right there it's so pretty so it's almost like a, a bronzer and a highlighter all, all at once and it's just so, so pretty. Luminous bronze light. If you are uh, kind of around my skin tone, you may really like this. It just, it adds um, a flush and definition at the same time on the cheek. It's just, it's, it's neat. And I do love the fact that Hourglass has these minis because this kind of product can take forever to finish. And at least in a mini, you have a chance to, to use up the product and, um, and feel good about being able to get through some makeup. Or maybe I'm just showing how much of a collection I have. Anyway, last item, and this one is a Canadian brand, Marcel. It's not available everywhere. Um, can be more difficult to get. And it's called Group Marcel, or Marcel Group. And it is out of uh, Montreal, Canada. And this bronzer is huge, but what I like about it is it has a bunch of sections. And so you can go for a deep bronze or you can go for a very, very light bronze. And it has a beautiful mirror, which is great. It's like having a bronzer and uh, a big mirror if you're going to be away on a trip somewhere. Uh, it gives you a, a big mirror. I really like this one and the Hourglass bronzer for the fact that you kind of have a highlighter and a bronzer in one. And if you don't bronze super heavily and you just want something light, these can be uh, a great option. So again, this one and this one from Hourglass. And now the question is, what is the perfect shade of blush? I cannot narrow it down to one, so I'm going to show you a few. I'm going to uh, give this one just a quick view again because I have used it quite a bit because it's just such a, a natural, very, very mild flush of color. I do really like this one from e.l.f. And it doesn't have a name on the back, so I can't tell you more than that, but it is a bronzer and blush duo, and it's a peach-colored um, blush. And I want to, to show you a few more. Um, this one is one that I really like. It is a uh, liquid blush from NARS and it's Dolce Vita and it lasts forever and it's a beautiful cool mauve tone which is nice compared to having a blush that is warm. Sometimes I want to wear warm, sometimes I want to wear cool. They are not 100% interchangeable. I consider them two different colors that I absolutely want in my collection, which is why I'm showing you those. So definitely this one and definitely one that is more on the uh, peachy, corally side. And this is why I want to show you this one as well. And it is the uh, Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso, very much uh, similar to the NARS uh, Orgasm, which I also have. And I really feel like a, a, an illuminating blush like this is, is beautiful. So I want that mauve color from the Dolce Vita from NARS and I want this kind of uh, baked, luminous, 
sort of blush as well and this one this gives it to me this one and um, as I said the the NARS uh, orgasm as well does it so for me a cooler tone mauve blush and a warmer tone peach blush those are both essential because I will do looks that that fit with with both and for today's look I definitely went with one of these because it goes better with my my lipstick even though I have a cooler tone eye look, uh, this is the type of blush that I went for today. And I, I actually used a cream blush called uh, Peach Dream from Joe Fresh, which is a blush that I am panning this year in my um, Partners in Cream project. I'll put that latest video right there. Okay, we're get, getting there. I thought, oh, it's just 10 questions. I'll be so quick. Huh. <laughs> Famous last words. All right, we got through blush, and now we have which highlighter has the perfect finish? You know I have more than one, so let's get to it. Again, I like these for different reasons. I have to talk about the Becca Opal. This one has been repressed because it, it, it suffered, but it is a beautiful highlighter. That I very much enjoy and obviously I'm using it because I ended up having to repress it so it's it's getting used and then this one is a it's not liquid it's kind of like a cream uh, highlighter from Tarte and it's the Tarte uh, Tarteiste Pro Glow and I use a little clip to, to keep the product towards the the end it's a beautiful cream based um, highlighter and I put just a little bit see how the little bit I put on and it's going to cover a significant part of the real estate on my hand you see that it takes very little I I do have it on my cheek you, I think you can see just the shine that I have on here it's this and it's it takes so little it dries really quickly and it's just beautiful so again the tartiste pro glow um liquid it, that's what they're calling it liquid um highlighter it's just it's beautiful i don't know if they still sell this um if they do powder or cream i would i would go for it because it has this beautiful almost like a little bit of rose and champagne I can't stop looking at it. It's, it's, it's very, very nice. Peach, oh, more, I said rose, but no, more more like a peachy champagne is, is more what this looks like. And finally, if I can only bring one highlighter container, this is what is it's going to be. And this is from Cover FX. And what's so awesome about this is that it has three of their noteworthy highlighters. It has Celestial, Moonlight, and rose gold and it's all in the same container look at that so you can just use the cap uh, open up only the one that you want put a little bit in here and then use um, the highlighter brush to pick up product and to apply it to your face this is genius the fact that they put three of their top highlighters best known highlighters in a single container for me on the go when I have a business trip this is this is exactly what it is that I want and it's already in powder form it's not as though like this opal that I had to repress I don't worry about traveling with a container like this and I have three options like I said super super happy so if I'm traveling and I want a highlighter I will take one or both of these and Likely, I'm going to take this one just because I have three options as opposed to this single uh, product. If I'm away for just two days, this is probably the one I would take because it's just, I don't need to pack as much, obviously. And I should mention cover effects for highlighters, the powder products in general, their quality is really, really good. I don't, I, I, I don't worry about CoverFX products, they just tend to work for me and so it's kind of a go-to brand and it took everything 
for me not to purchase their um, blush duos that they had. I put the Mavi combo in my cart more times than I can count. And I ended up not buying it because I am really tight on, on money uh, this year. And I just, I, I've never been able to justify it because I have quite a bit of blush in my collection and it just, just doesn't make sense to, to get more. But man, Cover effects, I love their stuff. I really do, and I hope that some of it sticks around for a while. Okay, this next category, if you have seen my lipstick videos, um, I will I will put them all, I will link all of them, three videos, um, in this uh, video because there's, there's a lot. So when I'm showing you just a few, you can keep in mind that I have gone through hundreds of my lipsticks of late. And when I bring you brands that are my, my favorite and some particularly that are favorite colors, you know that I'm going based on a ridiculous number of lipstick products to compare to. I am going to start with a brand that really is no longer, I would say, really known for their lipstick, but I cherish certain colors in of this brand, and it is uh, Urban Decay. And I have to say that there are a specific set of lipsticks from Urban Decay that, that are fantastic in my opinion. And if you have them in your collection, please take them out and use them because they are fantastic. This one is a sheer uh, lipstick called Liquid. It looks awesome. I've been putting it on top of highlighter, but it should work fine. Uh, if I'm going to a conference or a casual place where I, I don't want to worry about my, my lipstick, this is the lipstick, the lipstick that I will put on. It just puts a sheer um, wash of color and it looks great. This one is more of a brown lipstick. It is called 1993. It is It was a flagship lipstick for Urban Decay for years. It's beautiful. If you like that kind of a, a warm chocolate brown, I highly recommend it. Uh, when I wear it, and this is this is more of a, a corally brown lipstick, but I think you can tell that this deeper brown would look good. And same thing with this one, which is a metalized uh, lip product called Bobby Dazzle and I was distraught. I went on a trip and I lost my Bobby Dazzle and it was the number one product for me for this conference and this is like your lips but better. It's like a, a glittery, not sparkly, I wouldn't say glittery, sparkly um, lip balm type of a lipstick that is super comfortable but makes you look, makes your lips look like they're dressed up. And I really enjoyed this. Now, maybe you can't find these anymore, but I would definitely say that these types of colors for a finish are really nice to use. And finally, I would be remiss in not mentioning Backtalk. And, and I almost don't have to mention Backtalk because it's a very well-known lip product from Urban, Urban Decay that... that just makes a lot of makeup looks look beautiful just because of the rosy mauve uh, that constitutes this uh, lipstick. The Vice lipsticks that uh, don't set, so Bobbi Dazzle and Liquid, the brown one, the first brown one I, I swatched, so I'm talking about these two, this one, and so these two are the ones I'm talking about. Uh, the ones that don't set, they just stay on kind of like lip gloss, which is great. And then the ones that, that do set, such as uh, 1993, I'm always nervous about that, 1993 is the name, uh, and then the other one, Backtalk, once you put them on, they pretty much stay put and look good for an extended period of time. So the, the comfort mats do stay on the lips, which is great. 
Another one that is a uh, kind of a setting, but not, you can still, you take your finger and you would still find lipstick on your finger, but it has good staying power is this Elizabeth Arden Smoky um, Plum number 37. I have that right, Smoky Plum 37, yeah. And I think you can tell I like it. I'm almost done with it and I want to finish it because it's getting old and I don't want to lose it. But Smoky Plum 37 is a, a common color for uh, Elizabeth Arden. If you have trouble finding that one, Iced Grape is also a beautiful color if you like something a bit more toward the purple. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very pretty lipstick and the quality of the lip product, it's right here. The quality of the lip product is very, very good if you like a rosy mauve kind of a color. Now let's talk about three uh, final brands, and no, I'm not giving you an answer because lipstick, uh, like I said, I, I use a lot of different brands and I want to tell you about the best ones. This one is a Canadian brand, Lise Wetzier. The lipsticks, uh, what she call them again? This company calls them the Gourmand. And this one is called Sucre d'Orge, which is a, um, a candy that it comes out at Christmas time in Canada mostly in uh, Eastern Canada, and it looks like this. It's a very, very pretty color. And uh, it's more in the your lips but better kind of a category, so it's right here. It's just a gorgeous color. And all of the um, Gourmand lipsticks that I have tried from Lise Wetier, I have enjoyed, and they're, they're, they're very comfortable. And I really want to talk about Color Drain. And there is the original packaging for their lipstick. This one is absolutely beautiful. It does make me think of um, 1993 actually. And it's called Serene. Beautiful uh, lipstick. I won't swatch all of them. And it also now, the company also has its cardboard packaging. And this one was from the Safari uh, line. It's called Huntress. It's a gorgeous deep brown. And I, I just, I think it's it's the cat's meow. It's, it's quite, quite nice. Look at that brown. Isn't it beautiful? And I have put it on and I, I think I get away with it j no problem. And I'm not, I'm not exactly uh, a deep skin tone. And it's, I think it looks rich, beautiful. For a, a deep color like that, I would probably recommend a lip liner. But it's a very good quality uh, lipstick, whether you're using a either one of the types of packaging they're, they're really good and then finally I want to talk about this one I think it's the yeah very Victoria from Charlotte Tilbury this one and the pillow talk uh, medium or original um, they are lipsticks that I think are beautiful I'm going to put it right over here and what I like about this lipstick is how hard it is and the reason I like it is because it takes forever to finish this lipstick. So even though it looks like there's not very much, this is going to last me a long time. It's going to take me a long time to finish it because the saturation of the color of the lipstick makes it last a long time. And I do like the packaging uh, choice that uh, Charlotte Tilbury uh, has made for her lip line. So there you have it. Urban Decay, Lise Wetzier, Colored Rain, and uh, Charlotte Tilbury. Those are the lipsticks that um, have my heart when it comes to uh, bullet lipsticks. Oh, and pardon me, Elizabeth Arden. I thought I was miss missing one. This Smoky Plum from Elizabeth Arden is fantastic, uh, along with a number of uh, her other, uh, that brand's um, other rosy kind of, of lip products. Okay, moving on. <laughs> the next one I want to talk about is uh, the palette that has the perfect shimmers. And I'm only going to bring out one. Finally, I'm just bringing out one product for a specific category. And it may not be popular and I don't care. It's my answers. It's the Naked Cyber Palette. This palette gets no love. 
and yet it is a go-to palette for me on a re very regular basis. I love the duochromes that are in here. There are a number of colors in here that are uh, duochrome and they are flipping fantastic. Um, I, I, okay, there are a few that I go straight to. Um, I definitely go for uh, Y3K and I don't tend to pay that much attention to the names. Static, Override, uh, this peach one right here, Call IT, and um, Cyberspace right here. The, basically all of the, the shimmers in this palette, I go and um, reach for, for various looks. And I remember, I don't necessarily remember the names of them, but I remember the color and I go into this palette specifically for the color, the dual chrome that I'm looking for. And, and they're, they're, they're beautiful. Like they're, they're, I'm just gonna swatch a few for you. They're, they're beautiful. And I just don't know why they get so much flack. They're just, they're, they're really, really nice. So there are just two of them and they're, they're, they're some of the, the more basic ones, but they, they just, they look, they look really, really nice. So when I want to put a couple of mats on my eyes and I want to do something shimmery from the inner to two thirds of the lid, I go for the Naked Cyber. It's just easy and my eye look looks great and I get asked what it is that I have on my eyes. And it's that stinking palette that everybody was poo-pooing. It's a really good palette. I highly recommend it. Please take a look at it. Please go swatch it. If you have a chance to see palettes from Urban Decay and you know that Naked Cyber is going to be there, you can swatch it. Please swatch it. Please, please swatch it. Um, let me just do another one, which is just one of my favorites, which is uh, Y3K that I mentioned earlier. And it's one of those uh, typical kind of reddish, bluish duochromes. Well, this one I could wear... Actually, on my headshot, in my headshot picture for my channel, I am wearing something just like it. It's super flattering. Now, where am I going to put this? I'm going to put it over here. So I've got the other two. It is super flattering. It's gorgeous. And every single time I wear a color like that, I get asked, what the heck is on my eyes? And, and this one has some very, very micro shimmer lime green. It's, it's just, they're just beautiful. This one has more of a kind of a dusty rose with, with micro blue shimmer. They're so pretty. And so every time that um, it gets poo-pooed, I just kind of go, what? Have you tried it? Have you swatched it? It's lovely. I got this palette the moment it came out. I was convinced that I would like the fact that it was mostly a, a topper's palette. Let's let's be clear. I don't I don't I'm not big on the orange that they chose to include in this palette. I don't get this. Um, I like everything else about the palette. I just don't like that end color. It's it's so good. It's so good. I'm in here on the regular, and I have I have a lot to choose from. The fact that I'm reaching for this on a regular basis, it says something to me. And there are other naked palettes that I like more than this one for a full look, but when I'm looking for a shimmer, this is the one I go to. It just is. And now I'm going to show you another palette that you might say, well, that one has amazing shimmers, and I would agree with you, but it, it ranked better for the question which is, um, which palette has the perfect color story. And I really think that the YouTuber who created this palette knocked it out of the park and, and I will never declutter this palette. I think it is a, a, it is a piece of art all on its own for all of its attributes. So let me show you.
It's bittersweet because it is Tiny Marvels by Mel Thompson. And she, when I got to see this palette, I immediately purchased it for Steph Lyons, who is my good YouTube friend, uh, obviously here on this platform. And these, these uh, shadows overall are just so good. They're so good. Um, the mattes work so well. This are, these are Sydney Grace shadows. This one up here, Scarab, can you tell why I would be big on this one? It has a kind of reddish and, and green, kind of like the um, uh, Y3K from uh, Urban Decay. It has that kind of a finish. And all of the shimmers are beautiful. And if you look at the color story for the mattes, they are very complementary to the shimmers. And there are plenty of mattes, which makes me so happy. There are uh, two, four, six, eight, nine mattes in a 15 pan palette. So, so happy. I was very, very happy when I saw the mattes. And the shimmers are rich and it does not take a lot on the finger to get the effect. This is a really good uh, palette and it's even more important for me just because of this one, uh, Death uh, Moth, which is really Death's Head Moth. It is the, that is what I have as the logo for my gym. I train people, I'm a kinesiologist. Uh, the technical world, word for a person who has studied exercise science and yeah, the Death Moth is the uh, logo insect for my gym. So I had, I felt like I had a special connection with uh, Mel Thompson. Of course, uh, you may very well have heard Mel Thompson passed away last year. And uh, it, it was a, a real eye opener that you, you never know, you never know what, what can happen in life uh, with, ourselves or with friends um, or acquaintances or, or people you admire from afar. Almost certainly all three of those. And uh, yeah, so I, I loved it before I heard more about what was going on um, and will continue to cherish it. I think uh, Sydney Grace did a, a fantastic job producing the product. I think Mel did a fantastic job at curating the palette and I'm very very pleased that her family still benefits from uh, her creation even well beyond her her passing so um, I hope I don't end on a, a bad note um, I do want to acknowledge that this would have been my choice no matter what it it, it was the automatic uh, answer for me for that uh, that palette question which palette has the perfect color story this is an amazing color story for 15 pans it's like everything is in there and also the artwork is top-notch it's it's everything it's it's so perfect for the type of palette it is that it comes to mind in my collection there's no need for recall this palette is, is always top drawer in my collection. So that's it. I had 10 questions. I showed you way more products than 10 products, but I think it was worth it. And I think I had rationale for each one of my answers. And I really don't discriminate. There's some really inexpensive stuff that I think trumps the high end stuff and vice versa. I'm just going to show you what works for me and um, I, you decide what works for you in your collection. I do think that an array of colors for face products as well as eye and lip matter and, uh, and I, I don't think that there's a one and done color when it comes to blushes, highlighters, bronzers. 
it's just what you're what you're wanting to use that day unless you want to only have one of each category of product if that were the question i would probably answer differently because i would pick things that work with anything else not necessarily because it's the best color or best finished standalone so makes sense because it depends what you want to emphasize on a given base on a given day a given basis a given mood a different uh, a given event so it's not so straightforward you have to go with what makes you feel good and that that's what matters feeling good in your skin and enjoying and en enhancing some of your features here and there and um or just having plain having fun. I'm going to stop it right here because I could just go on and that's not helpful. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found something uh, helpful, useful. If you did, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what it was. And if you have some suggestions of products for us all, I would love for you to leave that below as well. I look forward to reading what you have to say. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it every single time, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care.